The end of the world is near, or is it? Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Drinking little Headbangers Brew this morning. Our wonderful coffee. What? You haven't tried it yet? Are you serious? It's time. You can get the coffee and all of our stuff, cool stuff. We are metalwearefamily.com, including this cool mug. We're going to use this today. I'm blessed to be a blessing. This was one of our first mugs. And year one, we're in year number three right now. This is year number one. And um, yeah, love this one. I'm blessed to be a blessing. We talk about that every day, don't we, at the end of the show? But uh, anyway, here's the question. <sighs> oh yeah. Dear Pastor Bob, the world is a mess and the return of Jesus Christ to the earth is very near. Why don't you ever talk about that? I'm looking forward to Christ getting us out of this mess. Well, that's one of the reasons I don't talk about it a lot. First of all, I don't know when that time is. And, uh, you know, it just depends on how you read prophecy. Because there's a whole lot of events that have happened before. And people say, oh, this is the end time because of this and this and this. And I've heard that all my life. And we've talked about this before. But the world is a mess. By the way, the world has always been a mess. <laughs> it always has been. And can I just say, folks, that I don't believe the presence of darkness is increasing. I think only the exposure of it is increasing. I think we see a lot more what's going on. Things that used to be done in the shadows are becoming obvious. But you know, when darkness is at its thickest, the glory of God shines through and rises above all of that. And historically, that's happened too. But you have to say, who benefits from this? You know, there are a lot of fear mongers out there. A lot of people that are making others afraid and, and talking about all of the end time stuff as if they're authorities. The Bible says no man can know the hour or the day. And uh, people say, yeah, but we know the season. Do we really? Because all of my life I've heard that we're in the season. But I think a lot of Christians fail to progress in their lives as Christians because they get stuck in this end times rut. Hear me out. This is really our motto. I am blessed by God to be a blessing to others. When I look for the rise of the Antichrist instead of the return of the king, my focus is wrong. And that's all a lot of people can talk about, including some pastors. When I'm obsessed with the mark of the beast, instead of being marked by Christ's love and his presence, if I'm focused on escaping the earth instead of redeeming it, instead of being a blessing to it, if I'm immersed in fear rather than hope, then I'm following the wrong people. Simple as that. Honestly, it really is. I want to get into some scripture on this today. Because the Bible has some things to say. Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 15. And it says, beware of false prophets. You say, Pastor Bob, can you really call the people that talk about this stuff false prophets? I think after a while you can, if they're stuck on this. And, you know, prophecy in the Bible, you, you kind of, you understand the prophecy once it happens. And to, to begin to do a study from Old Testament prophecy that was fulfilled in the New Testament is amazing. It's incredible how many 
things were fulfilled. But now we're on this other one and people are guessing, they've been guessing all of my life. And people say, well, this means this, and this means this, and this means that. And there are tons of books that have been written that say that. The late great planet Earth. And not too many people are using that book anymore. Why? Because most of it didn't happen. What about that? What about all of this fear-mongering that happens? And the Bible says, beware of false prophets who come to you dressed as sheep, but inwardly they are devouring wolves. Now, do they know they're devouring wolves? Many don't. But they're stuck on this other narrative. And you'll fully recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy and sound tree bears good fruit, worthy of admiration, but the sickly, decaying, worthless trees bear bad, worthless fruit. A good, healthy tree cannot bear bad, worthless fruit, nor can a bad, diseased tree bear excellent fruit, excellent, uh, worthy of admiration. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire, Therefore, you will fully know who they are by their fruit. Now, what kind of fruit? Well, love. Love, love, love. Loving God, loving others, loving yourself. Brought on by Christ's redemption at the cross. And because of that, we are blessed and blessed to be a blessing. And so our narrative changes, it changes. No longer am I focused on the Antichrist, I'm focused on the return of the King. No longer am I obsessed with the mark of the beast, but I'm instead marked by Christ's love and his presence, and I carry that mark into the world. I'm focused on it, on uh, Christ redeeming the world instead of escaping from it and condemning it. And I'm immersed in hope rather than being immersed in fear. There's a big difference. And folks, it's all a matter of our mindset and what Christ asked us to do. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind is that? Well, love, love, love. Christ said the greatest commandment was love God with all your guts and love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love, love. Love God, love others, love you. And folks, when we begin to do that and we begin to realize that we're blessed for a reason, then our narrative changes and our focus changes and we bring good news to a dying world. Well, I'm gonna say it again. You are blessed. So go and be a blessing. Subscribe to our newsletter at sanctuaryinternational.com.